Jenna Bittar is a high school senior on her way to college. She was picked by Amnesty International to be one of their interns. She talks about Cairo. I wanted to exp uh, share some experiences being on the march. Um, I am uh, a new activist and a young student, so um, one of the most powerful outcomes, I think, for all or most of the students there was just um, learning the ins and outs of activism, and that's really what we were able to do and what we were able to experience. Um, I was active in organizing the Gaza Freedom March early on. I was doing some work with my brother goes to Hunter College with the Hunter College Campus Anti-War Network, and as Abdeen mentioned, we were able to send many of the students on the trip with us. Um, but in the months right before the Gaza Freedom March, uh, I had a lot of college applications due, and um, Logistically, I kind of said to my mom, you're going to have to handle all the details. I would listen to the phone calls, kind of while writing some papers, and um, had really one mindset going over there, which was Gaza. Um, so, I mean, I left my house, doing my, I was doing my final applications, and um, getting to Cairo, arriving in Cairo, was not only a culture shock, but it wasn't something I had really thought about. I hadn't really thought about being in Cairo at all, actually. Um, so we landed in Cairo, and we had known that the Egyptian government had said officially for the first time, um, as opposed to the last um, delegations that went to Gaza, they made an announcement that the Gaza Freedom March is not getting into Gaza. Um, but in my mind, this meant that we were going to drive to the border and they were going to say no, and we were going to protest outside of the border, and, um, you know, put enough pressure on them. 1,400 of us was going to put enough pressure on them to let us in. Um, I really naively hadn't thought about getting stuck in Cairo. Um, so, um, I'm, at that point, I made the realization that we had a political goal. We weren't there. We wanted to be with the Gazan people, and we wanted to stand with them. But we were really there for political reasons, and that was to bring attention to the siege on Gaza. And being in Cairo, what we had, I mean, what we had was our power in numbers, and not just a representation of one country, but I think it was 43 different countries that we represented. We were all in one location, so our job then was to, you know, make some noise. Um, so my mom and I arrived a few days early, and that's what I really, um, I was really glad about. We were going to do some sightseeing, but we ended up getting to be part, you know, they had told us, I don't know if you know, but they had told us that it was illegal to meet in groups larger than six. So we were in these like illegal, what felt like underground meetings where we would meet and brainstorm with some activists that have been doing this for so long and have been involved in so much, you know, other huge movements that you, know, you got to share ideas and, um, hear about their experiences, and I remember the younger de generation, um, it wasn't the student delegation as much that was really um, powerful, it was the fact that um, we were able to see clearly how a movement works and be part of it. So, um, as I mentioned with learning experiences, I wanted to share a few examples of where I got to personally push the limits of the Egyptian government, I don't know if that's something to be proud of. Um, I think it is. Um, first of all, something I learned was the Egyptian police were really easy to convince of things. Um, it was a combination of, I think, the language barrier, and it was a combination of being an international. I had this immunity, um, but one of, I, I really thought this was a powerful experience. I was with um, my good friend Manije Saba, and um, she was doing the hunger strike. It was a few days into the hunger strike. There were 30 activists on the hunger strike. And they were going to do a press release in front of the journalist syndicate. Um, and her and I left early from the hotel. And we were walking over. And um, we get there, and the police are dispersing everyone. People had met kind of there before. Police are dispersing everybody. And she grabbed my arm and just pushed through all the police. And she said, listen, Jenna, we're taking this space. So we sat down on the stairs. and. <laughs> I was terrified because the police are really intimidating. Um, we sat down on the stairs and she said, don't move. <laughs> and so they're coming over to us and they're yelling at us and screaming at us. 
And she just like looks past them and she's saying, everybody come, come sit down, come sit down. Soon enough we have this whole group of people sitting there and the cops just completely backed off. And she you know, nudged me and said, hey, this is how you do it. You, you want the space, you take it. So, um, <laughs> This is, I think, that was where, like, where I got my courage to do what I wanted with the Egyptian police. Um, another example of that I thought was kind of funny, actually. Um, I don't know if you know about the French delegation, but they, or one of the French delegations, I believe, that there was, I think, 300 of them had camped outside of the uh, French embassy um, for five days. And we would regularly go and visit them and kind of you know, show our solidarity and just say hi. and. We went one time early on, it was a, few, a second day, I think, um, my brother and I and our friend, and a small group of us, actually, um, we showed up and they had, the French embassy always had about three layers of riot cops between you and the French people. Um, so we got there and they're like screaming at us, saying, no, no, you can't come in, you can't come in, and if you can come in, you're not getting out, like, there's no way you're getting out, you can't be here, just leave. So after some, I don't really know how, we were walking back and forth avoiding them, um, someone was able to convince them that we could go in for 10 minutes, that was it, we had 10 minutes to go in, then we could come out, they kind of looked at who went in, um, so we go in, my friend made a speech, you know, we had some great times with the friend, and then we left, but what I noticed was, I, I mean, later on I learned that they were letting people in and out, but that day there was a huge group of French, um, I think they were French, or they were just standing, staying with the French, um, at the point where you can enter or exit. And there's a huge group of them, and they wanted to get out. And they were being very, the police was being very aggressive and was not letting them out. So I kind of got my way out when the, ten, the 10 minutes were, was over. And um, I'm standing there, my brother and his friend were in the back, kind of, they were not, they were in the back of this huge group. So I got a little concerned and I said, I realized who was in charge. I went over to him and stood next to him. And I said, um, that's my brother over there, you remember him, let him out. So he's, he gives the orders in Arabic to let my brother out, and they're coming out. And then I realize, like, I have this power now, so, so I kind of nudging him, and I go down the list, I go, and the one with the glasses, and the one with the jacket, and I'm describing every person, every person that's waiting to get out, and he's sending the orders and letting them all out, and soon enough, everybody's out. <laughs> In this bit of news, Congress, as you know, is a rubber stamp for the Israeli government but not entirely. On January 21st, 54 members of the Congress sent a letter to President Obama calling for him to appeal to the Israeli government to ease the sanctions on the blockaded Gaza Strip. To see the names, including one who's local from Connecticut, Congressman Jim Himes, go to our website, thestruggle.org. And as we record this show, news that at the weekly demonstration in Berlin, Five activists dressed up as characters from the hit film Avatar to dramatize how Palestinians are victims of colonialism. We'll show you the video next week. That's our program for today. See you next week at this time. I'm Stanley Heller, and this is The Struggle.